What's up? My name is Zeb and I'm the host of My Highway Podcast, sponsored by Regions Bank. Today is our first ever Zoom podcast because we are quarantined at home, just like everyone else, trying to stay safe. Today we have Maddie Lynn Bro, one of my really good friends in Nashville, who is going to be on the podcast talking about her countless MTV appearances. We are going to take a deep dive into what happens in reality TV, what she does to train between her shows, and how she perceives herself once shows are aired on TV. What up, Maddie? How are you? Hi, I'm doing good. I'm trying to stay positive through this quarantine life, but I am in Louisiana and I'm with my family. So truly, I won't sit here and complain about it. Yeah, I did the same. I've changed locations now twice. I was in Nashville and now I'm in Florida. So there's a little bit of land for me to hang out with the family and just quarantine here. So I see that you're doing the same. Yeah, what part of Florida? Fort Myers. So it's um, way down there. Dad says it's with the alligators and the beach balls. Stop. Okay, so I went ride my bike to the back of my hometown, and you should see the suck these alligators out there right now. I mean, the one I, I captured it, and I put it on my TikTok, and it says, when your ex tries to come back in your life, and my song was No Scrubs by TLC. It was at least a seven, eight foot gator. <laughs> I've been living on your TikTok. Talk about those hat flips and stuff you've been doing. Is that your brother? Who is that? that okay, yeah. So I had started a TikTok probably a little while ago. Someone introduced me to it and I was like, I got on. And then I noticed it was like a younger generation. I'm like, uh, I don't know if this is what I want to be a part of. Well, then I come home because so, of course, reason why I'm in Louisiana is someone in my family got sick so we had to test them she was actually the first out of the first 300 in louisiana to be tested for the coronavirus wow. so i hurried up got down here well then since i was around her i got quarantined so i got quarantined with my mom and also her children so now i'm with my got children who are six and 13 well going on 13 and they are all about tiktok i'm like y'all have to show nanny so it's my sister's children. So they show me and I'm like trying to learn the dances. And Zeb, I'm sitting here sweating in the front of the light trying to do, I'm a savage. Just a <laughs> and I couldn't get it. And then finally, I started te just teaching myself. I sat there and watched it until I knew the whole thing. And now I'm obsessed with it. But I like the lip sync ones where yeah. like, it's just random people talking and I just match the tone because it's almost like you get to act. So you yeah. get to create this fun little character and it's something that you and your family can do together. So yeah. I don't know, I've just been- I feel like you're up. a lot more comfortable on camera. So for me, I feel like it would just be an awkward moment of me trying to dance. I did one, it's on there. I think it has like 10 views with Chrissy and some other people that I work with. But other than that- I need I'm to go check it out. <laughs> don't, don't waste your time. Yeah, I, no, that's the best part about it is I honestly, I think it's when you do feel the most uncomfortable, it makes it the best because you're like, oh my God, is this what I look like in the club? Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. So talk about, um, I know with quarantine and everything, things have been a little different. I see that you've been doing a lot more lives and communicating with your fans and all of those have grown from reality TV. So talk about the, the current show that you're on now and what's happening and you know how, how it's all going. Okay, so I am currently on MTV's The Challenge, The Total Madness, is season 35, which is one of MTV's longest reality TV shows, which is incredible, by the way, to be a part of it. But right now, we just started, so we are on episode three. It's on every Wednesday, 8, 7 Central on MTV. You can also check it out on the MTV app or MTV.com. But basically, it's just a competitive show where it's 28, depending on the numbers, from different reality TV shows. And we compete physically, mentally, emotionally for $1 million. So it gets wow. crazy. So tell us about one competition that's already aired. So we're not breaking any rules here, but talk about one, maybe the most challenging one that's already aired for you and, and like... 
how that well was. the initial first challenge for me is the craziest because you are it's your first time seeing all the competitors tj is blowing this god darn air horn i can't hear an air horn anymore all of a sudden i drop and i'm like oh god go automatic go but so you're looking and you see a lot of new faces so it's just like okay here's my competition and it's not that you're nervous or you're scared it's the anticipation how is he gonna go how good you know i've been working out for five months is it gonna pay off here and then not only that but the weather so we are in the middle of nowhere and it is freezing i mean i'm from south louisiana you're from florida i'm not built for the snow yeah i'm not i didn't know about layering okay so i'm sitting there and like shivering and then we have to run can't feel my toes so one of it is called battle lines so we have to pull a uh, like a rope with a barrel through and then tj's gonna chop it off and then you have to solve a math problem and then you have to run with the barrel so it's strength endurance and also smarts because we're doing this equation this math equation in the middle and let me tell you i got out of that dang puzzle i pulled it i think it was uh so half of the girls got out and then the half of us kept going and those puzzles get me i yeah. get frantic i'm like oh my god it's the first challenge and then you hear done 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 check i'm like oh my god <laughs> So they truly don't, do they, they really don't give you any prompt ahead of time to like what's coming or what's going Absolutely on not. We don't know what we're about to go into. We don't know if it's snakes. We don't know if we're about to have an eating challenge. When I say the challenge is a mental roller coaster, I've never, I mean, I've done reality TV for quite some time, seven years now to be exact, because I've marked this down, but I've never felt you're on a high and then the next day you're on a complete low because you might have lost a challenge and now you could be going home so your yeah. chance for a million dollars just faded between your fingertips yeah. it's and they have cameras in your face the whole time the <laughs> whole time so i'll be sitting there and like i'm pretty competitive i played sports you know fun fact about me i played sports my whole life starting at five years old i started t-ball at five and I, I was a pitcher through softball till i was 13. I also played travel basketball, so I was center. So I'm a little competitive, okay? So when I lose, I mentally, you know, get upset, not crazy upset but with myself, but I like to pull out my weaknesses, see where I went wrong. Yeah. And it's hard to do that when you have a camera in your face and 28 other people fighting each other, like who we're throwing in. Yeah. It's, it's pretty different. Yeah, I bet. So, and, and just compared to like the challenge versus the other reality shows that you were on, like it's, it's, it's alike because it's on MTV, but they're like completely different. So talk about, talk about how that transition from like party down South to then being on floor Bama shore and now being on the challenge, like the difference in how the production rolls and just everything for you, like how, how much of an adjustment was it? Oh, I'm, I won't lie, this, um, this last year, so I filmed for Bama Shore. I had off for about a month and a half, two months. And when I say off, I mean I'm not filming. It doesn't mean I'm not working at the bar, which is another job I had, or I'm not training for the challenge. So when I say off, I just mean I'm not filming. It doesn't mean I'm off from any other duties. But I filmed for Bama Shore, came back home, got immediately in a training, and then went film a challenge. So. I went from partying 30 nights, 30 days in a row to, okay, go fight for a million dollars. And like you said, completely different production. Whereas on the uh, other show, we can go certain places. You know, we, if I want to go get my nails done and have a girl's day, I can go get my nails done and have a girl's day. On the challenge, you see me at my worst. You know, I'm not getting my uh, hair done. I'm not getting my nails done. I can't tan. I look like a complete vampire. So, and not that you want to feel confident, but you do. You have to feel like you look good. So we work out and it's just completely different realms and it's adjusting. But to me, that's the best challenge of it all. Yeah. Because if I can adjust from that party to this, 
you know, then I can do a lot more outside of these television shows. Just imagine what I can do in real life, you know, with a business or with my friends or I think what challenges me in that aspect, it comes back into my real life. And that's what I like. Cause I'm like, I just had to fly off of a truck. This little task is nothing. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, and how did you get into reality TV? I mean, I know um, Party Down South was your first one. Did you like apply for it or were you like seeked out for it? How did that happen? Are you allowed to talk about that? Oh, of course. This is such a funny story. Okay, so I did when I was, I think, 17, no, 17 or 18. This is when America's Next Top Model was a big thing with Tyra Banks. I always was told, hey, you're so tall you know, your frame, you should try out. So I tried out for that show. I fell down the runway, didn't get it. Umpteen years later, I'm at a party. Have you ever heard of mullet toss? No, please tell me what that is. Oh, oh my God. Okay, so mullet toss is at the Florabama, which is a bar, the irony, Yeah. you know, but it's on the Florida and Alabama state line. And it is literally the title. You toss a mullet. You have a fish, mullet, and whoever throws it the furthest wins. It's actually one of the biggest speech parties in the South. Wow. I'm going to have to go with you. And all you see is LSU on one side, Alabama on one side. It is just like, oh, man, it's crazy. But I was dancing by the DJ. You know how I am, Dad. I love to dance. If you want to find me in the club, look at least 20 feet around the DJ booth because that's where I'm at. <laughs> I'm there in my band too, just turning up, hyping up the party. And apparently I did an interview. I walked with them around the uh, beach. I'm like, come on, this is the party. And a few weeks later, I get a call and I didn't answer it at first because I thought it was my student loans. So I'm like, uh, why are they calling me? Because I did two and a half years of college. Yeah. And I'm like, why are they calling me? And come to find out, it was um, 495 Productions. They were like, we want to interview you for this show. So I flew out to LA immediately. Next thing I know, I was on a plane and I was filming this TV show. So I was found. Yeah. And I think they had already had the full cast, (laughs) but then they found me and they're like, oh, oh my God. We got to just want to. I just want to let the listeners know that uh, yeah, I'm home. I said I was home for um, quarantine with my family. And last night I was just casually talking about what we were doing today. And I told my dad who we were, uh, who I was doing the podcast with. And he freaks out because he watched the show in every episode. So he starts talking about things that happened. And Maddie knows this because we, we texted last night about it. But I just thought it was funny because we think of those shows as shows that we watched, you know, as teenagers or in college. But I think that it strikes a much bigger audience and generation than than what people realize because it's kind of everyone's living through that moment of I wish I was partying with them. Oh yeah, and it's it's crazy. I mean, the, I've had I remember right after that show aired, we got back. And it, this was a couple, probably, I'm saying 60s, 70s, and they're like, Maddie, Daddy, is that you? And I'm just like, oh, my God. She's like, we love watching you. You remind us of us, like, of us when we were younger. And I'm just like, this is incredible. You know, it is. The demographics for this show, it ranges from 18 to whatever. So I think it's great. Yeah. And so when you were on there, I mean, I know that they, you said you could go get your nails done and you could do stuff like that, but were people, were they truly in your face with cameras all the time? Like, were you able to go do things outside of camera? Like how, how did that work? Oh, absolutely not. Apparently I'm interesting. I had a guy follow me around all the time. I'm like, come on, this is a good scene. Let's go. Wow. I'm like, Oh, I'm going to tell this person something. And I just learned to, I I remember when I first sat in the car, my palms were sweating. I was sweating because, I mean, in your face like this, and then you want to cry. Like, let's just say I had a night, or I'm feeling lonesome in my family, or this is just overwhelming, and I just want to cry. I don't get a chance to go and have some privacy and let that out. 
when you show emotions like that, you know, they'll get a little bit closer. And I'm like, you need to get out of my face right now. I'm sad. And, <laughs> and now I'm pretty sure that aired a few times. Oh, it aired. <laughs> it aired a lot. But I think it was also stuff that I was fighting, you know, like, which I had to work on myself. That's why for two years, you know, as, after Party Down South, after watching myself, I'm like, whoa, like, who is this girl? Like, just, you know, from stuff in my past that I had to accept and, you know, break a few bad habits that I was inquiring. And so, like, it really opened my eyes. I never wanted to change who I was, but I don't regret it either. Yeah. And how, I mean, talk a little bit more about that, because I know that, you know, we're friends and we've talked about it. And, I mean, how is how was seeing yourself on that show, especially, I mean, we've all had drinks. We know what it's like whenever you get to that level where you don't, it's fuzzy as I like to call it, oh. but then I don't have someone videoing me, you know, whenever we, I go out with my friends and stuff like that. So what was it like seeing yourself and how did you deal with that? Um, you know, for the first few seasons of that. Oh, the first few seasons was incredibly rough. I remember I used to get people that Oh man, they told me so many things. I remember I had to get my mom off of Facebook because somebody told me I should kill myself. My mom went ham. I called my mom. I said, listen, when someone's going to write that about someone, they are fighting demons mm -hmm. and you just entertain them. And that's what they wanted. But there was a few times I wouldn't watch the show. I only watched at the reunions because I criticized myself. Yeah. I, if I sit there and look at myself, I'm like, oh, you thought those jeans look cute. Oh my God, your hair. Like, I, you are your own worst critic. You might yeah, not you see are. it, but I'm hard on myself. I will break myself down to the core. And I know that. So I won't, I'll put it in the background so I hear what's going on. But when those shows come out, I'm connecting with my fans. Yeah. I'm on Twitter. I'm live tweeting because I want you to know where my head was. So you can understand my perspective of that time. You know, I think people forget that you see 10 hours. I was there for 30 days filming 24 seven, do the math. Yeah. So you only see a little bit, but I've also learned you gotta love yourself before you can allow, because people are gonna troll you. They're gonna try to break you down. They will say stuff mean and criticize. I mean, people will say something right now about my nails because I'm yeah. like, oh, well, okay, cool. Yeah. I still love me. You're still not going to break me. But that also took a lot of work. I didn't just get there overnight. I've been doing it now for seven years. So now when people tell me stuff, I'm like, bless your little heart. And I'll send them a, 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 um, a direct message. And I'm like, I'm going to just say a prayer for you today. Or it's just yeah. something just to throw them out of whack because like what's yeah. going on in their mind if you have to go and criticize people and i believe in having our own opinions but yeah you don't always have to voice them yeah so i guess that's so now i mean practices that you've picked up so that you don't that don't bother you as much moving forward you just don't read as many comments or what what are some of the things that that you had to change so that you don't don't do that I don't go read anything about myself. Yeah. I don't go search myself. I don't go on Twitter and I don't. I look yeah. at people, my mentions, I'm answering you back. I'm liking stuff that I see on my social media. If I'm on, I'm commenting on my friend's stuff. I'm like, yo, I see you, bro, keep going. Like, yeah. And if you put one negative comment or anything negative in my vision you blocked you deleted i'm not seeing it i ain't got time for it you ain't coming in my way you're not you're not messing up my flow because you want to be stupid i want to allow you in my circle yeah. and you'll know that because you'll slowly see me just like drive away and i had to i was um online one time and i was looking at certain things and i was like when i looked at something in particular i was like i felt oh my god i feel should I look like this? Is this what I should be doing? Unfollowed it. If yeah. I look at something and it makes me feel that I need to change who I am, you're out. Yeah. I like Smart. to laugh. And that's one step I did. I started meditating. I started working out and um, just really pulling up all those weaknesses to the surface, accepting what they are, 
my yeah. flaws and rocking and rolling with it. That's why people yeah. like you. Yeah. So. And I feel like you're, I feel like I, I watch both actually all three shows now just because we're friends and, <laughs> See, and I like to, I, I like to catch up and know what you're doing, but I feel like your confidence level changed not even your confidence level, just your confidence in general from going from Party Down South to Florida Bama Shore. Like, I know they brought you on in a different perspective on the show and you were a friend and you ended up staying in the house, but I just feel like your confidence and who you were, you were a lot more comfortable in that there. And I think it showed just knowing you on and off camera. You know, I was just like, dang, Maddie's really, you could tell, I feel like that you had really got comfortable in knowing what was going to happen and being who you were and not apologizing for it. No, I'm just, you know, we, I had to learn that like, we're all going to mess up. You will, you're going to fail. But to me, if you failing, it's actually a win. If you flip it and look at it differently, because it means you're trying, yeah. you know, and it's like, on this last floor of Bama Short show, you know, the whole instance with Jeremiah, you know, I didn't, I didn't go on that show thinking I was going to have a summer fling, but I was like, I was open to it and trying something new. Jeremiah is the complete total opposite of my normal type. I am the wild free spirit, sunflower in the wind. And this is a homeschooled business man. So complete opposite of if, if I lined up my past guys, you'd be like, man, that's, that's a, that's a circle right there. But I just also knew who I was. Like I misread a few things. I'm okay to, I'm okay to say if I did something wrong, you know, cause I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to move forward and I'm only going to get better. I'm not going to sulk in it. I used to like, Oh my God, I messed up sulking in my own misery. Hell no. I, and I'm okay to speak my mind now because my opinion does matter. And if you don't evaluate it, then you don't need to be around me either. Because I only surround myself with those who are valuable and assets to me, you know, not people who are going to bring me down or make me feel that I have to change, I don't know, certain things about myself. Yeah. And I know you talked about earlier about um, your training going from one show to the challenge. And I was just curious. I'm sure that people out there and listening want to know what what the training of Maddie looks like. What do you do? How do you get in shape? You know, what are your favorite things? Just give everyone a little dive into the fitness life of Maddie. Oh, it's pretty, it's pretty different. I mean, I go from you'll see me out in the bar and then you don't see me for what, three months? You're like where are you? I'm like, I had to go back to work. I, so normally I train with one of my fr guy friends, Jeremy Holtz. He trains a lot of like NFL, UFC fighters, stuff like that. So he really focuses on speed and agility and then just um, sprints, getting my speed up, you know, breathing correctly. Then I also do title boxing. So I go and I do a boxing class. Then I also work out at our YMCA just because I might sometimes just need to go get a good smoothie and they have the steam room and the sauna where I can go because my muscles start cramping or just like I can feel my body just aching and then I bartend so I'm on my feet but I also go to Percy Warner and I'll run up that mountain that way in case I gotta climb a mountain I know that I'm thing doing is it. Bad. I've oh, I can't do the full stairs. No, oh, it's bad. I have yet to be able to just run that full, the full stairs, but that's a goal. So you will see me do that. I just try to change it up. I'll also maybe do a hot yoga class. I want to be prepared in all aspects. If I got to go ground and pound on the ground, I'm going to know how to hold you. I'm going to know how to flip you. I'm going to know how to defend myself. If I got to run from a life like some zombies are chasing me, I'm going to know how to breathe. I'm going to know how to hold myself, how to recover. If I need strength, I know how to hold my legs or my shoulders so I don't hurt, you know, any parts of my body. And just balance and flexibility. And that the meditation, too, for staying calm in stressful situations and be able to think on my toes. I actually listened to the LeBron James on the Calm app. 
I felt like I was going in the fourth quarter of a basketball game the other day during my meditation. I'm like, oh, damn, LeBron. <laughs> That's awesome. What are you, what's your plans outside of TV? You know, Challenge is going to run this season, and who knows what's next for you. I'm sure it's all top secret. But I was just curious to know um, what you – what you have planned outside of TV, what, what do you want to do? Um, is it more fitness stuff? Have you looked into modeling in the past? Like where do you have business ideas? Like what, where are you going to head? What's your future look like? Well, here's the thing. I'm continually trying to learn and evolve. You know, what is it? I love fitness. You know, I want to learn more about the body, but I don't want to be in the gyms training someone so i learned that maybe that's not where i'm at but i can create something yeah so how do i take i love that i love being on the tv but i've been like that since i'm a little girl i could show you the videotapes i swear i just always for some reason was on in the middle you like i started in variety shows and pageants and i've always done that you know i thought about maybe trying to get into tv but that's another ball game. Uh, modeling, I don't know. I've always tried, but I'm actually considered a plus size model. So maybe that, you know, can come my way. I'm really open to anything. And if it doesn't work out, then I just shift directions. I'm also just enjoying this journey because I don't want to, I don't want to miss this because yeah. I'm searching for something else. Yeah. So like, I'm very, like I said, a free spirit. So I don't worry. I have my projects I'm working on. But I I'm also sure don't like do. to put all my eggs in one basket at once. So I'm just enjoying this challenge journey. But I ain't going nowhere, and I got a lot coming up. So can you give us any insight? I mean, are you allowed to drop any secrets about, you know, the challenge or what's happening? Are you allowed to give me anything? Well, what I can give you is we're just getting started. When it says the challenge, total badness, it, it's not, we're not lying. You yeah. think the beginning, we've only been in two episodes and the twist of the game has been like nothing you've ever seen in the challenge before. And like I said, we're just starting. We, yeah. We're only about to get on episode three and I swear I sit down and I'm like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? Because we're watching it with you guys. Yeah. I don't know what's about to be shown. I, I mean, of course I lived it, but you don't know. You don't know what's what's about to show. You don't know anything. So yeah. I'm on the edge of myself, on the edge of my seat with you when we're watching. So, yeah. And I also live tweet. So you can follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. I'm everywhere. TikTok. I'm pretty. You know, I communicate pretty well with everybody. So. And now that you're home, you get to watch it with your family. You'll have little watching parties. Oh no! Well. So my mom is the one who started making me do the law. She's like, you need to go and talk to your people. And I'm like, I know mom, but I always just didn't feel comfortable. Like it was just weird. I was, it was different. Just looking at myself on the screen and talking, yeah. you know, I'm like, I don't know what to do. Where do I put my hands? Yeah. I just started letting me go. If I talk with my hands, I talk with my hands. If I have something in my teeth, I just, I don't care. I yeah. laugh. I ask them questions. You know what? how are they doing during this time? Because I feel like enough about me. Let me see how you're doing. Is there something I can help you with? But I'm just going with the flow. I get it. Well, I had a little game planned. So if we can play it, um, I'd love to do that. Oh, gosh. Let me pull it up here. So it's a little, it's just a this or that. Um, I didn't want to get too crazy. I know we're all in I quarantine. Game, and you're, you're trying to stay in shape, so we can't do anything crazy. But um, no, I got. I just ran three miles a little bit before this, and I'm like, "Oh, girl, put the Tito's to the side." I'm trying to do the same. Um, so being stuck on a desert island, if you were stuck on a desert island, who would you prefer it to be with, Kurt or Kodai? Kurt. Why? Kurt's you. Kurt's real. I think Kodai. We just get drunk, and we do something crazy, and we one of us might lose each other whereas kurt i think is more handy than people expect like you don't see that side of him yeah. kurt low-key is like one of the realest and funniest guys 
But I think he still has got to come out that shell, but I see it and I can't wait till the world could see it, but I would keep Kurt with me on that island. Oh, that's hilarious. So would you watch The Bachelor or The Bachelorette? Or do you watch both? I don't watch them. Yeah. I think it's a weird show. I'm not going to fight this other girl to get a rose. I will go buy my own fresh rose at Kroger. Yeah. It's just, I, I, I think it's a great show. I just, I have friends who went on it, who are on it. But if I had to watch, it's going to be The Bachelor. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. All right. So um, if you could live and be a roommate with anyone from Party Down South, right now in your life who would it be tiffany tiffany is such a big part of my life like she's such a complete mom but like when i say i can look at that girl and tell you what she's thinking i'm not kidding and she can look in my face she's like don't you dare it's just i don't know we've been around yeah. each other and i gotta call her actually she's actually about to have baby number two Wow. Oh, that, wait, can I change that? She's got two kids running around. I'm <laughs> going gonna, gonna to pick somebody else. Can okay. I change it? <laughs> yeah, you can. I'm going to just bring daddy. Oh, yeah, that'll be a party. Oh, God. Actually, can I change it again? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, Tiff first. I would definitely go with Tiffany. Tiffany yeah. first. Um, so would you rather have perfect teeth or perfect hair? Ooh, perfect teeth or perfect hair? Perfect teeth. Why is that? I don't know. I'm a mouth girl. I think because I'm a lip girl. I love lips. The first thing I look at are lips and shoes. I know it's weird. People love feet. It is what it is. So I'll, I notice that first. Whereas your hair, like, I barely brush my hair. Y'all lucky if I, brush, I brushed it today. You know what I mean? So yeah, I'm gonna go with teeth. Oh, that was a good one. I like that. Um, I have a whole list here, so I'm like picking and choosing. Uh, let's see here. Would you rather share a room for a season with Nelsa or Amy? Amy. Amy's think... just funny. Amy's crazy and I swear, like, you don't know what's about to come out her mouth. Whereas Nilsa, Nilsa's very extra. Nilsa knows this about herself. She will tell you, like, she's extra. But th that's why I love her, because she's okay with who she is. Yeah. Amy, don't give a front door, okay? And she'll just make you chuckle, and she just is like, sometimes you're like, what world are we in, you know? And I think I love to laugh from my belly. So I love when people are around me like that, that make you actually chuckle from your gut. you like, <laughs> For the record, I'd go with Amy too. She's probably one of the funniest ones on there. Oh, she don't give a <sighs> shit either. She will get on, she burned her ex's stuff on TikTok. Just started lighting it all up. That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, country music or pop music? I know you live country in Nashville. Music. Yeah, I was about to say, I think I know the answer to that one. Yeah. Um, so if you had the opportunity to do another MTV series or star in a movie, what would you do? It would definitely have to be some, an action thriller. I either want to play the bad guy, like the villain, you know, or like a Fast and the Furious, where I'm yeah. driving a badass 67 Chevy Camaro SS, candy apple red, peanut butter seats. <laughs> You dream that <laughs> up the time or two. Not to go into detail or anything. <laughs> I know you love shoes, so I was going to ask you, sneakers or heels? Sneakers. But I like the cool kind. So I, you could get sneakers with a little bit of a wedge on them now. That way, if we got to run, I could run. Because, y'all, in heels, I will fall. It's so bad. Yeah. Are you a righty or lefty? I'm a righty. Would you rather never be able to speak again or always have to say what's on your mind? Always have to say what's on my mind. <laughs> I feel bad for anyone around you. Uh, well, at least you don't get the truth. That's true. I would just go on an island where yeah. I don't have to see anyone. Talk to the fish. That's God weird. damn, he's back again. I don't know. <laughs> I, I just, I, I, to not be able to speak, like to not be able to voice my opinion, I, I don't know. That would be... Yeah. All right, Jeff, 
let a good song out. I like to ride in my car and just sing the neon moon, you know? Yeah, yeah no. Hey, that's one of my favorites. What about you? What would you do? That's what I was thinking. I don't I think I'd be with you. I would I I wanna speak, so they just gonna have to hear what I gotta say all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean I I'm sorry if I offend you, but I'm just going to say it in a very low voice. That way you don't take offense. Like, yeah. you know, you're really getting on my nerves today. <laughs> but <laughs> that way they can take it. Whereas as far as I'm like, you're getting on my nerves. Yeah, that's true. Tone's everything. Tone is everything. That's why I yeah. hate text. I'm like, I'm calling you because I think you're taking this the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. Well, Maddie, thanks for getting on here today. I know that being at home, we both had a little bit of struggle trying to figure out the Zoom thing and figure it all out. But I, I've been loving doing these podcasts and I love for people to hear. And it's my way, you know, to give back to the fans and the people who want to be, you know, what you're doing one day. And this is a way to reach the masses. So thanks for I love on here. that. No, thank no. you for having me. You know, I feel like I don't always open up and I'm like I told you, I'm super excited to do this podcast with you because, you know, I'm, I'm going to give it to you straight. Yeah. And I love the this and that game, and I wish you nothing but the best. I can't wait for everyone to hear it. So be sure, let us know if you're listening, and be sure to catch us, catch me on Wednesdays, MTV, 8, 7 Central, The Challenge, Total Madness. And tell everybody where they can follow you if they don't already, you know, what's your oh. social media and all of those things. Okay, so my Instagram is my full name, at Maddie Lambro, M-A-T-T-I-E-L-Y-N-N-B-R-E-A-U-X. And then my Twitter, my Twitter handle is Maddie L bro. And it's not like, what up, bro? It's French. So it's B R E A U X. But from there, I have most of my links are going to be within each other. So you should be able to follow me on TikTok and or other social network. I'm pretty fun on there. Yeah, you are I'm fun. I watch you all the time. Sometimes I go on a little, you know, I'll start talking and forget what I'm saying. Well, whatever. Well, I think we all struggle with landing the plane every now and then, so. Uh, yeah. All so right. Well, thanks for hopping on here and enjoy time with your family. And if obviously stay in touch and I can't wait to talk to you again. I can't wait to go back to Nashville. We're going straight to <laughs> Tin Roof, huh? Straight to Tin Roof. Bye, Great. All right. Bye, honey.